everybody. Sorry I'm late again today. Um, woke up a little bit late this morning and then we had to have lunch. So I'm doing school at home right now. Tomorrow I will get back to the regularly scheduled time at 10 a.m. Okay, so today I'm going to read a couple books. Um, the first book I'm going to read is called Spring, Time to Build a Nest, a story about trumpeter swans. And this is written by uh, an author friend of mine named Barbara Renner, and I love trumpeter swans. Here in Minnesota, we live on a lake, and every fall and every spring, the trumpeter swans stop in our lake on their way um, to and from their winter home. And you can just hear their trumpets across the lake. They echo, and they're just so pretty. So um, trumpeter swans are one of my favorite birds. So I like, I really enjoy this book. I think the um, illustrations, well, it looks like they're paints, paintings, but I'm not sure, I guess. So, okay, let's start reading. Okay. The sun peeks out from the clouds and melts the ice on the lake. Pop, snap, crack, pop. It's spring. Why are you going to listen? Can you put your chair back a little bit and you can see better? <laughs> okay, have a seat. What, what kind of bird is that? <laughs> what kind of bird is this? A swan. Yeah, it's a trumpeter swan. It's spring. That means the trumpeter swan's coming back, right, Wyatt? Yeah. Listen, Cobb. Do you hear the ice crackle and shatter? Pen tilts her head. Wyatt? Wyatt, can you stop moving and be quiet now? People can hear. Okay, come back over here so you can listen. Listen, Cobb, do you hear the ice crackle and shatter? Pen tilts her head. Time to build a nest so I can lay my eggs. We better hurry. So a cob is a male swan and a pen is a female swan. So they're looking for a place to build their nest. As the ice melts, the lake springs to life. Cobb and pen search for water plants to make their home. Looks like they're building a nest. I love these illustrations. They're so pretty. Look why, aren't they pretty? They're making a nest. Penn sees a pile of wood. Look, this wood pile is perfect for our home. The logs are already stacked. She climbs on top and begins her nesting. She plops and wiggles and squirms. She twists and jiggles and forms a bowl. Oh, so she just kind of wiggles and jiggles until she makes a little bowl wherever she wants to make her nest. A head pops up and a squeaky voice shouts, shoo, go away, you can't nest here. Go build your own home. Oh, who's that, Wyatt? Ah, uh, beaver. The beaver. So the pile of wood was the beaver's home that he's making. Mr. Beaver picks up a log that fell into the water and fixes the pile. Oh no, cries Pen. we better find a place to nest soon. The eggs are coming. Uh-oh, do you think they're going to find a home in time for the eggs? Pen nudges a mud pile. This looks great. Ooh, she found a pile of mud. She steps on the clump, making sure it's sturdy enough to hold her eggs. It's soft but firm. I think our babies will like it here. She plops and wiggles and squirms. She twists and jiggles and forms a bowl. Okay, Wyatt, do you think this is going to be a good spot, or do you think somebody else already lives here? Somebody else already. Who would live in a pile of mud? A mud pile, I wonder. I don't know. Worms. Hmm. Worms, maybe? Hmm. Or snakes. Snakes? Snakes. <gasps> the mud pile shakes and shivers. A nose appears and a deep voice rumbles. Scram! Get out of my home! You know who it is? Yeah. A muskrat. Um, we have muskrats in our house, don't we, Wyatt? We see them in the water making them. Mr. Muskrat pushes the mud to fill the hole. Penn states, we better scurry. These eggs won't wait much longer. The swans turn toward the shore. 
The shallow water sprouts bulrushes, cattails, and sedge grass. Pen spies a small island. She swims around and sees that no one lives there. We can build our own home here. Let's get to work. So now they're on a small island. Do you think that's going to be a good spot? Hmm. Or do you think somebody else lives on the island? I think no one lives on the We already saw a beaver and a muskrat. I wonder what other animals live on the lake. Oh, and then... Uh, Maybe a different bird. Yeah. Like a duck or a loon? Let's see. Oh, maybe it's going to be a good spot. Look. Cobb, Cobb's the daddy swan. Cobb plucks bulrushes and passes them to Pen. She piles them into a mound. Cobb pulls cattails and tosses them to Pen. She pats them on the bulrushes. She's making a comfy little nest for her babies. Cobb yanks sedge grass and throws it to Pen. She heaps it on the cattails. Pen plops and wiggles and squirms. She twists and jiggles and forms a bowl. Do you think it's a good spot? Mm. Yes or no? no, 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 no. <sighs> it's good. It's good. Uh oh, yeah. I see something on this page. Not... Oh. <gasps> oh, who's that? <gasps> Do you think fox eats swans? Yeah. It or do can. you think they eat something else? It can eat swans. Oh, it eats eggs. <gasps> Maybe the fox is gonna go after the babies. The egg the eggs. Oh no. The nest grows as long as a canoe and as tall as a fox. So their trumpeter swan nest is as long as a canoe? Wow, that's really big, isn't it, Wyatt? Mm. Building a home takes a long time, but it's worth it. Pen smiles and Cobb stretches his neck. Why don't they make it tall so no one can get in such a bed? I know, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't see the fox anymore, but I see, I see another predator. Oh, What's that? Bald eagle. Do you think bald eagles eat, eat eggs and baby birds? They do. I don't I don't know if they eat eggs. They eat probably eat baby birds, don't they? Yeah. Penn sits on the nest and lays an egg. Cobb watches for eagles to scare away. So he's scaring away the predators, isn't he? He's, been, he's doing a good job protecting his, the mom and the baby. Penn turns on the nest and lays another egg. Cobb brings pond weeds for Penn to eat. Why can't Penn find her own food, Wyatt? Why does she have to get food from the dad? Because she's protecting the eggs. Yeah, she can't leave the nest, can she? So the daddy goes out and gets her food. Pen circles around the nest and lays another egg. Cobb visits a swan family. <laughs> Pen stretches across the nest and lays another egg. Cobb takes a nap. I'm done. Look at all her eggs. How many eggs did she lay, do you think? She laid one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, maybe? Five, six. Well, don't you think this page is the same as that? Oh, yeah. The swans take turns keeping the eggs warm, and they wait, and they wait, and they wait. Until the hatches. <gasps> At last, four little cygnets peek from their nest. It's summer! Do you see any predators on these two pages? No. Me neither. But now there's four little babies, so we have to be careful, right? It's interesting that it's a swan, but the babies are called cygnets. Like, where did that name come from? That's, a, that's an interesting name they for a baby swan. Come, they both spell S. Let's check that. Let's see. Swan starts with an S. S. What does cygnet start with? It does. Can C make the S sound sometimes? Yeah. Yeah, like in the word circle. C sounds like an S, but circle is spelled like this. Why? Circle. I don't know why. Mrs. Krenz, why does why does why does the circle just start with an S? <laughs> Let's see. In the back of the book, there's some. Facts about swans. Trumpeter swans nest in late March to early May when they are four to six years old. They mate for life. That means they always have the same daddy and mommy together. 
Trumpeter swans build their nests on small islands on top of beaver lodges. They do use beaver houses. Muskrat dens or on shore. It takes about 35 days before the babies hatch. It may take them two weeks to build a nest, which reaches a diameter of 6 to 12 feet and 18 inches tall. Wow. So the nest can be 12 feet long. That's two times as long as Grandpa Jim. And it can be this 18 inches tall, Wyatt. That's really, that's a huge nest. Yeah. They can lay like 100 million eggs in it. It says the, the female lays three to nine eggs, up to nine eggs. But if it lays one then in the back of the book, there's some coloring pages that you can do. And then it lays That's ten cool. eggs. And there's a glossary in the front. It tells you that a bulrush is a grass-like plant that grows in the shallow water of lakes and ponds. We probably have some on our lake, don't we? Like, you know what a cattail is, don't you? Yeah. It's that long plant that has like a... Brown, a fluffy thing yeah, on. yeah, a brown, a brown flower like at, spike. Like at Grandma and Grace's house, they mm -hmm. have that pond. Yeah, those yeah. Side. Yep, and you can see they have them in this picture here, Wyatt. I think somewhere. Yeah. Do you see any cattails in here? Oh, I see some. Do you see any cattails on that page? Yes. Yeah. Yep, right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, that was spring, time to build a nest, a story about trumpeter swans. I know, I love this book too, Misty. It's a really good book. Okay, so now my son, Wyatt, who is here with us today. Wyatt, say hi. Hi. Thank you for erasing my whiteboard. And all the kids in my class have always loved this series. It's called Who Would Win? Right, why we like these books, don't we? So there's a whole list of different animals that the author compares. Um, and basically, you're trying to figure out if these two animals got into a fight, who would win? So today I'm going to read rhino versus hippo. So think about a rhinoceros and think about a hippo. And think about if they got into a fight, who you think would win? Okay, so Wyatt... Who do you think is going to win? Let's, I'm going to take your predictions. Rhino. You think the rhino is going to win? Okay, I'll guess the hippo then. We'll see who's right. Now, I haven't read this book before, so I don't know who's going to win. What would happen if a rhinoceros came face to face with a hippopotamus? What if they had a fight? Who do you think would win? The rhino. Meet a rhino. Rhino is a shortened version of rhinoceros, which means nose horn. Interesting. They certainly do have horns. This is a white rhino. Fun fact, white rhinos cannot swim. Interesting. Did you know the white rhino is the second largest land mammal? Did you know that? The What's the largest land mammal? Elephant. An elephant, you're right. And the rhino is the second largest. I didn't know that. Scientific name, <laughs> let's see if we can pronounce this, Wyatt, Keratotherium simum. I'm sure I butchered it. Meet a hippo. Hippo is a shortened version. That means I probably said it wrong. What's this hippo? What is hippo a shortened name for? A hippo short name. Yeah. What's the hippo's long name? Hippo. Hippopotamus. It means river horse. <laughs> Why? Because From now on. Because I don't know. I didn't think they could run, but I guess we'll find out. Hippos are mammals. A mammal is a warm-blooded animal with fur or hair that gives milk to its young. Okay. Types of rhinos. There are five species of rhinos. There's the white rhino. There's the Indian rhino. Look, Wyatt. See how he looks different than him? Black rhino, Sumatron rhino, and Javan rhino. This one. So they each have a nose horn. So actually, white and black rhinos are both gray and look alike. I wonder why they're called white and black rhinos, because they're not white or black, are they? That one looks kind of black, and that one looks kind of white. Yeah, this one's lighter, but this is the black 
This is the black rhino, and this is the white rhino. They both look the same color, don't they? This should be white and that should be black. I don't know. Types of hippos. There are only two types of hippo species. Hippopotamus and the pygmy hippo. The pygmy hippo is about half as tall as a hippopotamus. It only weighs one-fourth as much as a hippo. Look at the tiny hippo. He's called a pygmy hippo, and that's the regular hippo. A pygmy hippo? Pygmy hippo is like a smaller What hippo. if a rhinoceros? Hi, Cogger. Goes against the pygmy hippo. White rhino territory. Here's where the white rhinos live. They live in Africa. Oh, <gasps> Do the hippos live in Africa, too? Yeah. They do. So could they live in the same place? Yeah. They could. Could they fight each other? Yeah. I wonder if they ever do in real life. Um, okay. This is where white rhinos used to live originally, and they've been reintroduced here, so now they live here where the X's are. Rhinos have been on Earth for 50 million years. That's a long time. Wow. Time. Rhinos live in grasslands and savannas. A savanna is a grassy area with few trees. So that's where the rhinos live. They don't really need trees, do they? Hippos prefer to live in swampy areas like near lakes, rivers, and streams. Did you know that resting in the water, why do hippos go in the water, do you think? To hide. To hide, there's another reason. And get a bunch of mud so they can hide inside the mud. They don't hide inside the mud. Why do they put mud on their bodies? Because they look like rocks. No. Because they hide from animals. No. So they can stay cool because it gets really hot where they are. Because where they live, there's barely any trees, and it's Africa. Isn't it pretty warm in Africa? So they have to stay cool. So they go in the water to stay cool. Rhino diet. White rhinos eat grass. Grass, grass, and more grass. Rhinos are not meat eaters. They have no interest in eating a hippo. White rhinos have wide lips. They pull grass up with their lips and they chew it with their back molars. Grass eaters are called grazers. Interesting, so they're called grazers. This is a baby rhino. A rhino has four sections to its stomach. It takes a lot to digest grass. When rhinos are born, they can weigh 90 pounds. Wow. So rhinos, when they're born, weigh 90 pounds, and this is how they eat their grass. Hippos also eat grass and some leaves. They prefer to eat at night, and they rest during the day. Oh, so they, what do you call that when an animal's nocturnal? nocturnal? That's right. Areas that have been eaten by rhinos are called hippo lawns. I mean, areas that have been eaten by hippos are called hippo lawns. Which is cuter, a rhino baby or a hippo baby? Um, hippo. You like the hippo better? Which one do you like better at home? Do you think the rhino baby is cuter or the hippo baby? A hippo baby weighs between 60 and 100 pounds. Wow. Can you imagine having a 100-pound baby? <laughs> rhinoceros skeleton. Oh, here's the two skeletons. Right, A rhinoceros and a hippo are called vertebrates because vertebrates have backbones just like humans do. See their backbone right here? Can you feel your backbone? Go around the back. Do you feel your backbone? We have backbones, so we're called vertebrates. A rhinoceros has a heavy head. Why do you think his head is so heavy? Um, so... Why do you think he has such a heavy head? What's on there? Because of his horns. Yeah. This is a rhinoceros beetle. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they call him a rhinoceros beetle? Because he has a horn. Yeah. Here's a, here's a hippo skeleton. Here's his backbone. Um, they have shorter bones at the shoulder because they spend so much time in the water. Oh, yeah, look at his shoulder bone right there. And look at his shoulder bone. His are bigger. He spends more time in the water. This is a hippopotamus beetle. Really? Do you think that's real? No. No. They just made that up as a joke. The hippopotamus beetle is real. The rhinoceros beetle is real. Oh, yeah. Hippopotamus one is not real. Yeah. How would you like to ride around on a rhino? That's what oxpeckers do. These birds eat ticks, fleas, blood-sucking flies, and insects off the back of rhinos. They also eat earwax. Ew. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oxpeckers are also called tick birds. 
Oxpeckers are easy to recognize. They have red eyes and red beaks. They live only where there are larger mammals. They also like right on cattle, giraffes, zebra, and buffalo. Some scientists think it's a mutual relationship in which a rhino and an oxpecker both benefit. Others think the bird is a parasite. What's a parasite? Something that just sucks blood or like lives off of something else and doesn't really benefit the other animal. What does parasite? Benefit means it's good for him. Do you think these birds are are good for the hip? Good for the rhino? Yeah. Yeah. Why? They take chicks and yeah. Blood suckers. Is the rhino good for the birds? Yeah. Why? Because it gives them a ride. It gives them a ride, and it's giving them what? What are they getting off the rhino? Chicks to eat. They're getting food, aren't they? So actually, both of these animals are benefiting. That means they're both getting something good out of it. Okay, let's see. The hippo loves the water. One reason might be the carp that clean its teeth, hide, and lips. So the hippo has a friend too. There's a fish that follows hippos and eat, eats their waste. What's the waste? <laughs> the waste? They eat their tummy? No. Their waste? Not that waste. Their poop. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fish. There's a fish that follows the hippo and eats their poop. A carp is a type of freshwater fish. A hippo can hold its breath for five minutes. Wow. Whoa! Look at the fly. I know. Look at the hippo's mouth. He's got a big mouth, doesn't he? Yeah, actually, I think the hippo's gonna win. Here's the rhino foot. How many toes does a rhino foot have? How many toes does the hippo foot have? Four. So an elephant head. foot has five toes. Here's an elephant. Here's a, what's this, Wyatt? This is the largest mammal in the world. What's this called? Blue whale. That's right. This is a blue whale. Look at how big the blue whale is compared to an elephant. And a rhino. Here's the hippo. And here's a person. So that's just an interesting diagram there. If the you compare horses, the blue whale to an elephant. The horses, the tiniest. Yeah. Do okay, a hippo has. foot has four toes, and a horse foot only has one toe. They should do an ant. Yeah, that, you wouldn't be able to see that on the page. What's the rhino's best weapon? It's size. A rhino is huge. A rhino stands six feet high at the shoulders and weighs 8,000 pounds. So a rhino is as tall as grandpa. A rhino's shoulder is as tall as Grandpa Jim. Only his shoulder. Yeah, that's how tall his shoulder is. A rhino's horn is made of keratin. Keratin is the same material that your hair and fingernails are made of. So if you feel your fingernail, that's what his horn is made out of. It he weighs like four tons. Four tons? 8,000 pounds is four tons. Here's the hippo. A hippo's best weapon are its huge teeth and strong jaw. It has six front teeth on the upper jaw and four teeth plus two tusks on its lower jaw. It chews, chews with its back molars. A tusk is a long pointed tooth. Tusks are usually found in pairs. Elephants, hippos, walrus, and wild boars all have tusks. He weighs three tons. So which one is heavier? Which one's heavier? Um, the rhino. The rhino weighs 8,000 pounds, and the hippo weighs 6,000 pounds. Oh, so the rhino weighs more. Yep. The rhino weighs more than the hippo. Rhinos are mammals, but they have almost no hair. 2,000 more. Rhinos roll in the mud to protect their skin from the hot sun. Wow. Rhinos do? Huh? Rhinos do? Yeah, rhinos roll in the mud. I Hippos also have, here's what rhino skin looks like up close. Can I see? They have almost no hair. And this is hippo skin up close. They almost have no hair too. Hippos have a natural skin lotion. Their skin oozes a reddish orange oil. So this is how thick human skin is. This is how thick elephant skin is. This is how thick rhino skin is. Oh, and this is how thick hippo skin is. Who has the, hippos. hippos have the thickest skin. So I'm gonna say their skin is two inches thick. 
and this stands for inches. And rhino skin is one and a half inches thick. I like to compare the two animals on the chart so we can kind of see. The rhino can swivel its head in different directions. Oh, the rhino can swivel its ears in different directions. It has excellent hearing. A group of rhinos is called a crash. A rhino can smell and hear a lion before it sees it. That's probably a good, good thing, right? The hippo's head is beautifully designed. When it's swimming, its ears, nose, and eyes are above the water. It's always on the lookout. So he sinks into the water, and his nose, his eyes, and his ears are all above the water. A group of hippos is called a bloat. A hippo can sleep. That's the rhino. It says here a, a hippo can sleep underwater. When it's sleeping, it surfaces every five minutes to breathe. The hippo can sleep underwater, and you can come up every five minutes to breathe. Okay, here's its speed. How fast can a hippo run? 30 miles, 30 miles per hour in short bursts. That means, Wyatt, he can't run that fast for a long amount of time, just in short amounts, because that's pretty fast. How fast can a hippo run? 18. Only 18 miles per hour. In slow. Um, well, not that long. It's not, yeah, it's not designed for long distance running. A rhino can easily outrun a human. A hippo can outrun most humans. A rhinoceros gallops like a horse. Um, oh, it says, look at this is interesting. According to a zoologist, the closest known relatives of hippos are dolphins and whales. Hmm. A zoologist is a scientist who studies animals. <gasps> Oh, I told the illustrator not to show the rhino's rear end, but he did. Did you know the tail of a rhino has no significant function? That means they don't know why they have a tail. It doesn't do anything. And look, they look kind of similar in the back, don't they? Yeah. The hippo has a small tail. It's not long like a snow leopard tail, not fluffy and not good for balance. So he doesn't really have a reason for his tail either. They just, I don't know why they have a tail. Okay, here they go. They're going to fight. Now, who do you think is going to win? So I think the hippopotamus. The rhino's, the rhino's size is his best weapon, but the hippo has those teeth, right? Yeah. And the hippo can hold his breath for five minutes. He's really good in the water, but he's faster. Mom, the hippo's going to You think the hippo's You're changing your mind? Yeah. Okay, let's see what happens. The thirsty rhino walks over to the watering hole. As the rhino takes a drink, the hippo opens his mouth and scares the rhino away. The thirsty rhino tries again. The hippo opens his big mouth and the frightened rhino backs off. Later, the hippo wants a drink. This time, the rhino charges and chases the hippo. The hippo returns. The rhino lowers its head and flashes its horns, and the hippo runs away. Oh, he's got that horn. I'm going to put that here, too, because hippos don't have a horn, right? Rhinos don't eat hippos. Hippos don't eat rhinos. But they are fighting for the same water. Why can't um, they just share the water? The rhino's going to win. The rhino's going to win. Again, the hippo opens its mouth and the rhino runs away. The rhino returns and charges the hippo. At the last second, the hippo turns around and opens its powerful jaw and the rhino retreats. The rhino slowly walks back with its head down and its horns ready. The hippo swings around quickly and bites the rhino in its hind leg. Ouch! The rhino's leg is broken. It limps away. The rhino has made a fatal mistake. Who's watching him? The, the lion. Why? Because they want to eat it. Because he's injured now and he can't run. Yeah. Okay, and then it says, who has the advantage? Who weighs more? Uh... Hippos. I mean, no. Rhinos. Who's bigger? Rhinos. Yep, so check, check. Who has better weapons? Hippo. Yeah, because they have the teeth. Who has thicker skin? Rhino. I mean, hippo. Hippo. Who has better ears? Rhino. Yep, because their ears can turn, right? Who has better, who's better at swimming? Hippo. Yep. And who's faster? Rhino. So we have one, two, three, four for the rhino, and one, two, three for the hippo. So the rhino's better. I don't know. I guess it just depends. If you're in the water, the hippo is better, right?
But if you're on land, but the hippo has the, the big teeth. So check out this series, Who Would Win? This is a great series that teaches you about animals um, in a fun way. Okay, let's do some math, Way. Get your whiteboard ready. Well, before we do math, I just wanted to tell you that today and tomorrow, my um, kindness book is free for download um, as an ebook. So this book right here, Cami Wyatt and Kindness 2, you can get this book for free on Amazon as an ebook today and tomorrow only. And there are seven other authors who are also um, teamed up with me to give their books away for free too. So it's um, listed on my author page. The links are there. So me check it out today and tomorrow. Me too. Yeah, that's okay. That's because I'm at the wrong time today. I missed our time this morning. Okay, let's do some math, Wyatt. Let's start easy. Here we go. Ready? Okay, there was a hippo in the water. And there were five fish. The hippo eats food. No, I'm going to change that. We're, we're going to do something a little bit different, not adding or subtracting. Ready? Figure it out. Okay, the hippo has six teeth. There are two fish eating off of each tooth. How many fish are there? The hippo has six teeth. Each tooth has two fish on it. How many fish are there? Okay, why it says 12. Anybody agree? How did you know it was 12? Because I want like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Can you count by twos too? Would that be faster? No. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay, let's do another one. Why? Did you know that this is multiplication? No. It is. 6 times 2 equals 12. Okay, let's do another one. Um, Wyatt, there were two swing sets. Each swing set has four swings. How many swings are there all together? Eight plus. How'd you get eight? Because four plus four goes Yeah, eight. they each have four. That's even easier than the first one. So basically while you're doing two swing sets, they each have four. Two times four is eight. Two fours equals eight. That's that was too easy? Plus. Okay, let's do another one. That's what it means, right? There are five friends. They each have five cookies. How many cookies are there all together? No, we just said there were five cookies. They each get five cookies. There are five friends. They each get five cookies. How many cookies are there all together? How many, Drina? Anybody else at home? Figure it out. How many cookies are there all together? Okay, Wyatt, can you come up here and show us how you did it? Wyatt says 25. How'd you get that? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Yeah, they each have five, so you're basically just counting by fives. Good job, Dakota. Five times five equals 25. Okay, here's the next one. Can we go with next level, Wyatt? Let's go to the next grade. There were, okay, next grade. There were seven friends. Each of them get 15. Each cookies. of them have three cookies. How many cookies are there all together?
Okay, how'd you get that? Wyatt thinks 24. Okay, show us how you got 24. Yeah. Somebody else said 21, so we'll see who's right. How'd you get 24? And 25. That was for the last question, five times five. Okay, can you show us how you did it, Wyatt? Someone got 21. Mm -hmm. Oh, because six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 22. Hmm. Three, six, nine, 12. 15, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21. 21. No. <laughs> if there is one more friend, it'd be 24. You're right. Okay, here's the last problem of the day. This is going to be a super duper challenge, tricky problem, right? What? Ready? Ready, guys? Okay, there were 10 friends. They each have 11 cookies. How many cookies are there all together? Um, See if you can figure that one out, Wyatt. 10. So each one has 11 cookies. Can you draw the You can. You, the you do it. You do it. Why? I think you should do it because... One. So they each have eleven cookies. Can you think of a way to do this one? No. Okay, this is, can I show you what I would do, Wyatt? Did you know, Wyatt, come back over here. Come here, please. Did you know that with the, see if you see a pattern, Wyatt. Okay, the first circle is, Wyatt, with math, we always look for patterns because patterns might help us find a shortcut. So look, the first circle is 11. Wyatt, what's 11 plus 11? 11 plus Eleven is twenty-two. Okay. Oh, what do you think the next number is going to be? What's twenty-two plus eleven? Twenty-two plus eleven is thirty-two. Thirty. What's two plus one? Do you see a pattern yet? Do you see a pattern? Oh, yeah. What do you think the next number is? 44. What's next? 55. What's next? 66. What's next? 77, 88, 99, 100, 100. 99. So all we have to really do is just 100 add... 100 plus 200. All we have to do is add these two. The rest of them we could just do in our head because they were a pattern. So why? what's 99 plus 10? 90. Or 99 plus... What's 99 plus 1? Oh, it's, it's... it's I know, I know. What I know. is it? I know. Hmm. It's, it's 100... It's 110. It that is. is a final answer for the core... Okay, we are done. Bye. Wyatt, let me show you one more way to do it. Do you know how much 10 times 10 is? How much is... 100. Yep. So then we're just adding one more 10, and that would be 110, because instead of doing 10 times 10, we're doing 10 times 11. Yeah. So that's another way to figure it out. Okay.
All right, guys, you guys have a great day, and I will be back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. And don't forget to go on Amazon and get your free ebook along with some other ones. The links are on my other page. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you tomorrow. Oh, no, 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 no.